Good evening. Good to see you all in the Lord's house this evening. It's a pity to get started to have that music stop. That's just very comforting. Good, good way to get your heart in tune with uh, the service and getting uh, calm to hear from the Lord. But we will take our hymnals. 243 this evening to get us started. 243, stand with me if you're able. Victory in Jesus. I heard about an old, old story. 243. <clears throat> I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, and I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood i heard about his healing of his cleansing power made the lame to walk again, and he caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about a mansion he is built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. He cleansing blood. Great old song. Brother Doug, will you uh, open our service in prayer this evening? Amen. You may be seated. 264. Just over a couple dozen. 264. 
once for all. Free from the law, oh, happy condition, Jesus has led and there is remission. Cursed by the law and bruised by the fall, grace has redeemed us once for all. Once for all, a sinner receive it. Once for all, a brother believe it. Cling to the cross, the burden will fall. Christ hath redeemed us once for all. Now are we free, there's no condemnation. Jesus provides a perfect salvation. Come unto me, oh, hear his sweet call. Come and he saves us once for all. Once for all, oh, sinner, receive it. Once for all, oh, brother, believe it. Cling to the cross, the burden will fall. Christ hath redeemed us once for all. Children of God, O oh, glorious calling, surely His grace will keep us from falling. Passing from death to life at His call, blessed salvation once for all. Once for all, O oh, sinner, receive it. Once for all, O oh, brother, believe it. Take to the cross, the burden will fall. Christ hath redeemed us once for all. Amen. As far as announcements go for the coming week, we just have the youth rally coming up in New Paris on the 8th, and then the men's breakfast in Constantine on the 9th at 9. Is that correct? nine o'clock so if you're interested in going with the carpool uh, let me know we can make sure that uh, you're picked up or meet you at the church here or something and then next uh, Saturday after that the 16th we'll have the deacon trustees uh, pastor meeting at seven o'clock and then leave around nine for the quizzing in New Haven anybody wants to come cheer us on <laughs> And the 17th, Casey Davis will be here on a Sunday morning. And then the 20th, we'll have our annual business meeting, Lord willing. Remember to keep Brother Merlin and his family in prayer with the loss of their mother. And uh, Miss Linda, as she's going in for surgery tomorrow morning, traveling down early tomorrow morning. And then Brother Preston with his vertigo that he's experiencing. So keep those prayer requests in mind uh, with your a personal time with the Lord, if you would. Turn back with me, if you will. We're not going to have an offering. It's back there. Uh, if you uh, have offering for the end of the service, you can drop it in there, uh, if you will. Thank you. 207. As we continue on here, 207. Only a sinner. Have I gotten but what I've received? Grace hath bestowed it since I have believed. Boasting excluded, pride I abase. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Once I was foolish and sin ruled my heart, causing my footsteps from God to depart. Jesus hath found me happy my case. I now am a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved. Only a sinner saved by grace. This is my story to God be the glory. I'm only a 
sinner saved by grace. Tears unavailing, no merit had I. Mercy has saved me, or else I must die. Sin had alarmed me, fearing God's face. But now I'm a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. This is my story. To God be the glory. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. We'll stop there. And turn over one page, 208, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Amazing, isn't it? So thankful that it is. 208. <clears throat> Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt, Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Sin and despair like the sea waves cold threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold points to the refuge, the mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail to wash it away? Look, there is flowing a crimson tide. Whiter than snow you may be today. Infinite, matchless grace Freely bestowed on all who believe You that are longing to see His face Will you this moment His grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace Grace that will pardon Amen. What a wonderful uh, truth to sing about. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate your singing and playing for us tonight. We don't have a special tonight, do we? No? Anybody else? Anybody got a special? All right. Turn with us again this evening to Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, same place we were this morning, a little bit different focus. This morning, a new year, a new comfort, 
This evening, a new direction. <clears throat> a new direction. Joshua chapter 3, we're going to read again. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, and the Lord, or, or the, bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks at the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam, that is, beside Zeratan, and those that came down uh, toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off. And the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, passage of encouragement, passage of victory, just what we need to set ourselves and reset ourselves for this new year. I pray that you would give us direction, that you would give us encouragement. We thank you for the comfort that we saw in your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, like I said this morning, beginning of a new year, there's something special about new things. You have to be careful not to become a shopping addict, but there's something special about a new pair of cowboy boots, a, 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 a new a car or a new job, a new friend, a new day. There's just something special about that fresh opportunity to start again without any mistakes. And um, Ephesians, the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. In, in other words, uh, don't, let, don't, don't take yesterday's problems to bed with you. Wake up and let tomorrow be a new day. Amen? And uh, there's just something great about new things. We need new things. Jeremiah said that the Lord's mercies are what? New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. It's this time of year that we see all kinds of New Year's resolutions. <laughs> I 
And about two weeks from now, you'll see them go by the wayside. I, uh, I read the most common New Year's resolutions are lose weight, exercise more, get out of debt, and quit smoking. Well, here's some advice if you don't want to have those New Year's resolution, resolutions 10 years from now. Exercise, don't eat too much, don't smoke, uh, and uh, you won't have to have that one, those ones. Anyway, I, I guess it's probably pretty clear. I don't really subscribe to too many New Year's resolutions. That's either because I'm too proud to admit failure or, or something. I don't know. But I do need a new direction. I do need new resolve to follow after my Lord. And so this, we're going to get that here in this passage. The book of Joshua is, is full of new things. It's just new excitement, a new generation, new victories, new, new promises claimed, a new direction for the children of Israel. And they followed uh, after the Lord. Chapter 1 of Joshua, Moses had died, and the Lord confirmed to Joshua that he was to be the leader. Here in this passage, he's confirming it in the, in the eyes of Israel that, that Joshua is the leader. Chapter 2, we have... Uh, the spies that went out and crossed Jordan and, and uh, went over to, the, uh, to Jericho and the country around and spied it out. You know, I wonder if Joshua, uh, he didn't send 12 spies this time. There was only two faithful last time. And, and maybe they were his, his and Caleb's son. Let me see. Caleb didn't have a son, did he? I don't think he did. Anyway, there were probably two guys that were handpicked by, uh, by Joshua himself. And uh, he said, we're only going to send two out this, this time, and they're going to be faithful. And they brought back a good report that the, the, the land was scared and shut up. Because not only what the Lord had been doing for them, but because they remembered 40 years ago when, when, when the Lord devastated Egypt. And they knew the power of God. It's amazing how much the world knows about the power of God. But here they are, stepping out in faith, and uh, they've moved camp three days. They've been sitting there beside the, 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 the Jordan River, and um, they're ready to step out in faith. They're ready for something new, but they need direction, and uh, because they've never been, as Joshua said, down uh, never passed this way heretofore. This morning we looked at the comfort in that we find new ways, in, in the new ways that God will lead us, in the new ways that we have not been passed yet, the comfort in the fact that God has chosen the path, comfort in the fact that though it's new to me, it's not new to God. Though it is new to me, it is not new to God's people um, through the ages. Encouragement not to give up in fear knowing that God has been faithful to the present time and comfort in the knowledge that God, that following God, we know we will go in the right direction. God will not lead us backward. God will not lead us to, um, to, to some place that is not his will. And so that's what I'd like to focus on, the right direction, God's direction this evening. When the children of Israel came to Jordan, they didn't have any place to go. They had to wait on God for his direction you and I need to do the same thing as we come to uh, Jordan's uh, overflowing banks. Decisions and some waters that, that we look like we cannot cross. Uh, we're going to come and, and uh, we're going to wonder times. What did God bring me here for? It seems like a dead end. Well, where do I turn from here? And God says, wait. Wait patiently for me. Um, and so the first thing I'd like to, to bring out from this passage and encourage us to resolve this year is determine to hear God's voice and obey it. Determine to hear God's voice and obey it. This, this passage is full of commands. The Lord said unto Joshua, Joshua said unto the priests, the officers said unto the people, Joshua said unto the people, and it, it is full of commands. But it was to a people that were ready to listen. Determined to hear God's voice and listen. You know, the only thing different from this story and the story back in, in Numbers where their fathers and grandfathers stood ready to 
quote unquote, ready to cross over Jordan was the fact that they weren't ready to listen. Numbers chapter 14 tells us that uh, all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. This was at the, the testimony of the spies. Here we have the spies, chapter 2, that came back and gave their report, and the people were ready to go. Back in Numbers chapter 13 and 14, they had the report of the spies, and the people uh, wept and cried. They, they lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept all that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we died in the land of Egypt. Or would God that we died in the wilderness. The only thing different was obedience. The only thing different was a willingness to listen and hearken to what the Lord had told them to. We need to determine. Hear God's voice and obey it. The, the rebellious generation thought that self-preservation was more important than obedience. They thought that because of the circumstances, duty could be set aside. Duty could be set aside because of the giants and because of the trials and because of, of the unknown and whatever they were scared of. Duty cannot be set aside because of the trials that we need to face. Our duty is to obey and leave the rest up to God. God's the only one that can control the unknown in our lives. We need to obey. That's what Samuel said to, to Saul. To obey is better than sacrifice. We are soldiers. It is our duty to say, yes, sir, and move out. And so, secondly, I want to recognize God's presence. Recognize God's presence. We need to, to see the presence of God. We need to look for the presence of God. We need to look to the presence of God. 2019 we had a, uh, our speaker for the, the graduation at Howe Military Academy was a general. Uh, not a brigadier general, not a major general, not a lieutenant general, a four-star general. And in the, in the Army right now, you don't get any higher than that. In wartime, there's five stars, but I don't think there's any five stars that are still alive anymore. And uh, so we, I tell you what, that was talked about. That was looked for. That was exciting. I mean, the cadets looked sharp. They walked sharp. They wanted to impress this four-star general. That's the way we need to respond to God. Look for his presence. Talk about his presence. Talk about, uh, we're not going to see him actually in form, looming over the horizon or, or, or in, the, in the form of man. But we need to look for the presence of God and recognize it. See the results like the wind that blows the, the, the leaves. The ark here is the symbol of God's presence to the children of Israel. It was the priests bearing the ark that first entered Jordan. The host was to give them a little over a half mile, says uh, 2,000 cubits. I believe these cubits were probably... 20 inches instead of the 18 just by <clears throat> comparing a couple things but it would be close to two-thirds of a mile they were supposed to give in distance and that would give the the whole congregation doesn't matter how far back and how far uh off to the side uh, they could all see the ark of god entering into jordan those four priests walking in there um and so everybody could see the waters dividing the host was to give them this distance and, and, and stand back and watch as the waters piled up at the, uh, the presence of the Lord. See his power. And so the uh, waters piled up on the north side of Jordan and just pushed on back. And, and, and uh, from, from all appearances, it was uh, visible from Jericho, all these waters piling up from from Adam, which is on the uh, east side of Jordan, up by the river Jabbok. And then from Zeratin, which is halfway up the Jordan, uh, up in the, where the brook Cherith breaks off, where Elijah was fed by the ravens. And so um, this, was, this was not a small thing. I mean, having these rushing waters come down and then back up, up the river Jordan and, and flowing out and... And um, then on the, the south side, 
were draining away. And the Bible says the waters failed. And those cities along the Jordan River, further down south, wondering what happened to the waters. I mean, this was floody here yesterday, and, and there was nothing left. And God's power was visible. And anybody who was standing there watching saw the Ark of the Covenant down there in the lowest part of the riverbed. And the water's piling up. Well, I bet you um, the devil was hard at work trying to break that dam God had made. Trying to destroy the children of Israel and any chance of redemption that would be further down the, the, the road. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, the, the Bible says that, that they were clean passed over. I love that phrase. They were clean passed over Jordan. Uh, can you imagine the excitement when they got on the other side? Can you imagine them talking, did you see that? Of course they all saw it. But you've got to reiterate and, and you've got to spread the excitement. And, oh, I thought that was coming down. I mean, this is so high. Have you ever seen, this is like the, the, uh, the, children, or the, the, uh, the priest with the Ark of the Covenant would be like a little dot standing in front of this massive dam of, uh, of water. Incredible. The story they had and the presence of God with them. Um, they must have been inspiring. Giving them strength, giving them courage to, to move on with the presence of God with them. Who can stop the, the, the floodwaters and pile it up like cordwood? What can, what can we not do? What can we not conquer? Isaiah writes, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Don't forget that last word, with my righteousness. You're not going to see the power of God if you don't get a hold of the righteousness. But we need not, or, or we need to look for his presence in anticipation of what he will do. And not go on ahead and try to get ahead of the Lord in independence as if he does not exist. It is his presence in our lives that gives us strength. It is his presence in our lives that gives us victory. And as Daniel said, wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Uh, Dan Daniel wrote, Blessed be the name of, of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things and knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Interesting that God gives wisdom, not to the simple, but to the wise. Those who are ready and willing to do his will. Those who already have planned, already know, and are following after the Lord. And uh, Jesus gave the same sentiments in his parables. The disciples came to him and said, why do you speak in parables? Because they don't want to listen. I'm only, I, I, I tell you and explain the parables to you because you're ready to listen. You want to understand, but they don't want to. So their eyes are blind. And so Dan, Daniel said, God giveth uh, wisdom unto the wise. Be that as it may be. Moving on. Not only do we need to hear his voice and look for his presence, we need to stop being anxious as if God's not in control. God is in control. As feeble as we are, we can't add a cubit to our stature. <laughs> we can't uh, change our, our, our color or control whether or not we have hair or not. <laughs> if we could, I'd have a little more. <laughs> it's really uh, quite humorous when you think of, of our inability and how we flex our muscles and think we're great. But um, we have no control over our eternal destiny. That's in God's hand. Why do we, why do we fret and, and uh, worry about it as if it is guarded by our own hand? God made it very clear here in the passing of Jordan where the power came from. You guys, you stand back there. You give us a, a half mile, three quarter mile head start. The nations need to see. You need to see. This is where the power comes from. You want power? 
you look to there. You look to the ark. You look to the God, uh, the great I am. That's where the power came from. God made it very clear. Stop being anxious about what you're going to be facing on the other side of the flood. As you're walking by, maybe I, I, I would presume about a half mile downstream where they could see it. They needed to, to have that distance. And um, as you're walking by, you're going to see where the power is that stops that water. That's the power that is going to conquer the uh, armies that you will face in the new uh, promised land as well. You know, the Canaanites and the Jebusites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Hittites, and they probably felt pretty safe on the other side of Jordan until that ark started walking into the water. And they ran. Everybody in Canaan knew about it. Watch out. The great I am, the Jehovah, the God of Israel is coming across. It's the mightiest manifestation of God's power. Um, it wasn't the mightiest warriors that dove into the water and made it across. It wasn't the host that came down all at once and just plowed into the waters and stopped it. No, it was a small gold box with a couple angels on top, borne by four priests. Stopped the waters. It's as if God was saying, you get a problem with me giving this land to these people, you take it up with me. I'm coming in. You want to you, you wanna take me on? These are my people. That's their land. And they moved across Jordan. And not a single soul lost their life. Just amazing. Not only a sign to the people of God, but as a warning to the enemies of God. Don't mess with Jehovah. Children of Israel couldn't take any credit. There was no way any of them could have said, did you see what I did down there? <laughs> How many times do we take credit for what God does? We get proud. How many times do we think to ourselves, you know, where would this program be if it wasn't for me? Where would this church be? Where would this uh, program, this or that, where would it be if it wasn't for me? And, and we take rob God of his honor. They robbed God of his glory. This wasn't happening this day. There was no way they could, they, they could take God's glory. We do not guard God's honor. He guards us. And so it was. The Ark of the Covenant stood there in the lowest part of the Jordan River. And the host of Israel passed over on the south side. Oh yeah. When they were out in the wilderness, they surrounded the tabernacle. They surrounded the Ark. Three tribes on each side. But they were not the protectors. That was so that they could be close and have fellowship and have communion with God. They were not the ones that preserved and protected God. And we need to rid ourselves of the idea that we are the guardians of the divine. Whether it be a divine God or, or, or our divine souls. Our eternal souls. No, the Lord is our keeper. God is our protector. He is our shield. And we need to lift him up in our eyes. Stop being anxious about the things as if God is not in control, as if God is not powerful. Be careful for nothing. In other words, be full of care about nothing. God is the one that has the power here. The power comes from God. The power comes from prayer. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Fourthly, moving on here. As far as direction goes, don't hurry ahead of God and don't hesitate when he gives the green light. Don't hurry ahead of God and don't hesitate when he gives the word to move. How many times do we anticipate trouble and, and, and rush headlong after a solution without any clear direction? The children of Israel did not rush into the Jordan and trust God to save them. No, they waited Three long days with no idea what they were to do. And when the orders came to pack up their tents, they waited again. Until the ark was in the water, and, or the, the, the sole of the, the feet of the priests were touching the water. And the ark was fully halfway into 
the Jordan River, stopping the waters. They waited. And then when they were given the word, they moved on out. God is not in a hurry. God's clock is never fast or slow. It's perfect. His timing is perfect. And when everything was set in place, they, were mo they, they moved out. God does things decently and in order. There's an order to everything he does in our lives. And we need to uh, put our faith in him. The grace of God ought to calm us in turmoil. The grace of God ought to calm us in turmoil. And when you and I get all worked up about perceived trouble in our lives, we need to go back to the Word of God and see if we're accessing that grace at all. See if, if, uh, if, if the grace of God is really controlling in our lives. Because it's there for us to, to access. And just as important as not getting ahead of God, it is equally important not to hesitate when he gives the signal to move out. See no hesitation in this passage. The, the, the children of Israel made haste to get across the Jordan when, uh, when God gave the, the, the command. On command, the priest stepped forward in faith, stood there. Boy, I tell you, they must have been brave men. Stand there and, and, and listen to that water piling up and cracking and groaning and who, who knows what all. But that must have been towering above them like who knows how high. And they just stood there with the ark on their shoulders. Awe-inspiring sight to be sure as, um, as, as the water piled up. And children of Israel moved across on a dry riverbed to the south of, of, of the ark. Just, or Joshua, pardon me, Chapter 4, verse 10 says, They hasted and passed over. Next chapter, um, verse number 10. They, the people hasted and passed over. There were not some that were straggling in the back and, well, we'll wait and see how it goes for those who go on ahead. No, there wasn't any of that. There wasn't those who who uh, were, were lazy or still packing their tents or, or hesitant in any way. No, when God gave the command, they moved out. And that's what we should be ready to do. That's what we should uh, not hesitate to do. It's wrong to rush, and it's wrong to hesitate when God gives the, uh, the okay. It's like sitting at a, a traffic light. It's wrong to go running through the red one, but you're going to cause a lot of trouble if you sit there when it turns green, too. And so we need to learn not to hurry God's program. But don't sit there and hesitate when he gives you the green light either. Fifthly, um, we have one more direction that we must not neglect. And that is found in, in verse number five. Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. Maybe the most important direction we can get out of this Tonight, if we expect, if we desire to see the Lord do wonders in our lives on our behalf, if we desire to see the uh, Jordan divide, if we desire to see the walls of Jericho tumble, if we desire to see the, the lion's mouth shut, if we desire to see the storms calmed like Jesus did for the disciples, that we need to be clean. We need to be sanctified. The crossing of Jordan itself is a picture of the washing of the people. I love the wording in verse number 17. They were clean passed over. The Lord says it again in, in, in chapter 4 verse 1. That, and it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan. And then again in uh, verse number 11. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over. <laughs> Being clean is pretty important to the Lord. Being sanctified. Joshua gave the command to sanctify yourselves. We don't have a ceremonial sanctification like the Old Testament uh, ceremonial law has. But we need to come to the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. And be sanctified and cleansed and purified. And that is true for both salvation and sanctification in our lives. 
Wherefore, or therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Israel was to sanctify themselves, get all cleaned up in anticipation of the wonders that God would do on their behalf. It doesn't mean they were perfect. It's impossible to be perfect on this side of glory. It doesn't mean they were perfect. But God needs the watching world to see that you're different. God needs to see that you're set, uh, the, the world to see that you're set apart, not perfect, different for him. And uh, that's why they needed to sanctify themselves, not partake in that worldly lifestyle. And so, so that the world would know the power comes from God. God expects righteousness. God expects sanctification. This year, there are going to be some things, uh, some ways that, that, that we pass we have not passed heretofore. And the time to get things right with God is not when you're in the middle of the trial. It's not when you're in the middle of Jordan. It's before you step into the, the riverbed, before God parts the waters. Sanctify yourself. There's going to be trials. Don't wait until the trial comes to get right with God. When the trial comes, you're going to be wanting to be on praying ground. You're going to want to be on holy ground, uh, prayer answering ground. When you are in the trial, in the flood, or else those flood waters won't be stopped. And what a sad thing that would be. What trial do you fear? What, what seems to be uh, too great a cross to bear this year? Is it debts? Is it job? Is it uh, weakness? The unseen? What would it be? Do you want to see God move on your behalf? Do you want to see the, 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 the waters split for you? Get clean. You're not going to pass over and be delivered if you're not sanctified before the Lord. This is not an outward sanctification, but a purging of the heart. Just like Jesus said to the blind Pharisee. He called him a blind Pharisee. Um, he said, cleanse that which is within the cup and the platter. And the outside, that the outside of them may be clean also. So, if we follow these directions, if we follow the leading of, of this passage, what can we expect? Does it mean that we're never going to go into trials anymore? We're not going to have any hard times? No. The other side of Jordan, there was battles to fight. There was, there was things to conquer. There, were, there was strife. There was walled cities. There was battles. But look what Joshua says in verse number 10. We looked at it this morning. Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. Living God. All people, all men endure hardships. But through our trials, through our troubles and difficulties, uh, the living God is with us. He's not among them. He's not among the world. He's not working on their behalf. And so the world has their gods. Every one of these uh, Canaanite nations had their gods, several of them. They were powerless. The world today has their gods, powerless to deliver. But without trials, we would not see the hand of God on our behalf. We wouldn't have seen... The, if they had not come up to the Jordan River the way they did, they'd never seen the power of God to split the water. And so our trials uh, allow the world and us to see the hand of God strong on our behalf. Uh, nothing revealed the power of God in the Babylonian kingdom like the threat of death on the head of the wise men. Daniel was one of the wise men. and He was sought out to be killed. And uh, yet God used that trial to show his hand powerful. All of the other wise men were powerless. They had their gods. They were magicians and sorcerers and astrologers. And, and, and they had their gods. They had their science. They had their astrology. And they were sentenced to death. So was Daniel. But here was Daniel. One man stood up sanctified, clean. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He was sanctified before God, and that was important. And God changed everything on the behalf 
of that one man. The living God was the strength in his life. Nothing revealed the Son of God, a uh, Son of God, the fourth man, like the fiery furnace. If it wasn't for the fiery furnace, nobody would have seen the fourth man standing in the fire. And so when God takes us into these hard times and trials, it's for his glory. And uh, all, of the, all of the mighty men there standing and, and, and all of the princes and the lords standing there on the plain of Dura that day, they had their God of gold that they were bowing down to, powerless. But the fiery furnace brought out the living God, the fourth man in the fire. And so our trials reveal the living God in our lives and to the world. And so the hardships we endure or expect to endure become easier when we live for God, follow his direction. Jordan River splits and no longer becomes an obstacle. You know, probably each one of us, hopefully each one of us have things in our lives where we look back and think, I don't know how God ever delivered me out of that. I mean, I know he did, but it seems impossible. And there may be stories in our lives that we may say, well, I, I don't know if I can relate that because people won't believe it. Nobody would have believed it if they hadn't seen the water piling up. Water doesn't do that. Maybe you're in a snowstorm traveling and come through a whiteout and right head on with another vehicle and all of a sudden it's not there. Even though everybody in the vehicle saw it. The living God that protects us and, and, and guards us and, and uh, looks out for us and takes us through Jordan. I read a story of two missionary later, ladies who drove a, a treacherous mountain trail on a stormy night where they couldn't see anything to take uh, medicine to a dying uh, tribe. And they got there and they, they spread the medicine and, they, and, they, and, and saved many lives. But they could not return down the path because an avalanche had wiped out the road two days before they had traveled up it. Tell me how that happens. Impossibilities that God does. And, and, and sometimes we, we shy away from sharing stories because people just won't believe it. People would not believe today the story that God piled up water so the children of Israel could pass through. Oh, there's got to be some scientific explanation for this. There is. The God of science. <laughs> but God. That's the only way you can explain it. I have a friend um, <clears throat> who said he, he, he was led of the Lord to go speak to a native tribe. And so he did so. He went out way, way out in the bush and, and spoke to the native tribe and witnessed to them of salvation. And they spoke, spoke with him. And he went on his way, and two weeks later, he went out to visit them, and nobody could understand him. They didn't speak his language. They didn't speak English. But two weeks earlier, they understood him clearly. How does that happen? I don't know. God makes a way. God divides the Jordan. When he has a job to be done, there's nothing that stands in the way. And there will be things in our lives when we follow the Lord and, and follow his leading implicitly, sanctify ourselves, that we cannot explain. Impossibilities. Jordan piling up. <laughs> Red tape that just gets cleared away. Can't really explain it. But God. God does not bring us to the brink of Jordan just to forsake us. Isaiah writes, can a woman forget her sucking child and she, uh, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Doesn't forget us. So many times we forget him. Spurgeon writes, Rest assured of this, that God has resources you have never dreamed of, and difficulty shall only put you into a position to see new displays of Jehovah's power and grace. How about that? We don't have to worry. What does that do for your spirit? 
well, certainly spurns us on to trust him more, just like it did the children of Israel. They were ready to take on the battles. They were ready to take on the, the, the Canaanites and, and all of the, the, the wicked uh, nations of the land. What was the end result? Well, mentioned it this morning, God magnified Joshua. God magnified Joshua that day in the eyes of the, uh, of the enemies, in the eyes of the children of Israel. You know, the name Joshua means Jehovah is salvation. And it is uh, the Hebrew word for the equivalent of Jesus in the New Testament. Joshua and Jesus, basically the same name. And through our trials, Jesus should be magnified. Through the, 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 the things that, that we go through, the purpose of God in our lives is to magnify Jesus. That he might be magnified through our lives and in our eyes. You got one job. Make God look good. Make Jesus look good. And uh, God will take care of the rest. You don't have to worry about it. And so that should spurn us on with courage. Onward, Christian soldiers. We do not fear because we follow a leader who has never been defeated. Never will be. It's good to be on the winning side. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this passage in Joshua chapter 3, full of victory, full of promise, and full of uh, instruction. Lord, may we follow our great commander. May we not fail, for you have never failed us. May we sanctify ourselves this day and uh, get ready and get right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take your hymnals this, this evening, if you will, and we're going to turn to number two.